We are in the kitchen today talking about noodles. Um, the reason why is because we are making spaghetti and meatballs. And of course we want to put that over something delicious. We are very familiar with our standard brands of hard pasta that is dried. Um, you can see here we have a whole wheat noodle. And the reason this is whole wheat is because when we go to the back of the package, the first ingredient is whole wheat flour right here. So whole wheat flour, that is how we know this is a whole wheat product. Um, so if in fact you want to make pasta, this is a really great opportunity to incorporate whole wheat and whole grains into your diet. Um, one trick to whole wheat pasta, a lot of people say sometimes it has a different texture than regular pasta, that is very true. One of the things that you can do is cook it a little longer and that will make it a little more soft than al dente. And then oftentimes we find that the noodle tastes similar to um, its white counterpart. Other options for noodles include things like these vegetable noodles. So you can see here, they do have these in packages at the grocery store, right in the produce section. You can also find them in the frozen section. This is a great way to incorporate more vegetables in your diet. If in fact you are trying to eliminate maybe a little more carbohydrate. Um, so this is a really great option, super yummy. And what's really wonderful is that things like zucchini have a very um, neutral taste. So they take on the flavor of the pasta sauce that we will be making. And finally, you can make your own zoodles. And that's what I'm calling this a zucchini noodle is a zoodle. You can see here this little contraption. I did buy this at Hannaford for about $12. And it's gonna give me the opportunity to be able to either make spaghetti type noodles, you can see here, um, also a ribbon noodle or a little thicker noodle like a fettuccine noodle. So watch me demo this for you and I will show you just quick and simple. All I'm doing is rotating the vegetable and down below we are actually going to end up with our noodles. You can see here, here is that noodle that zucchini noodle. You can use this for carrots. You can use this to make things like squash noodles. I saw butternut squash noodles in the grocery store. But zucchini, again, is a very mild flavor, so it would be a really great option for um, a pasta sauce. We are in the kitchen today making one of my favorite recipes, turkey meatballs and spaghetti. So yummy and delicious. And not only that, but super simple and quick. I have already washed my hands to make sure they were nice and clean. My hair is up so that there's no hair in our food today. And we're gonna start with making the meatballs and then we're gonna make our own sauce and have them cook together. It's gonna be just this wonderful um, dish uh, that all comes together in the end. So we are using one pound of lean ground turkey. So this is 93% lean, or sorry, 94% lean ground turkey. And then to this, we're gonna add a few spices to um, add some flavor. So that includes some onion powder. We're gonna add a teaspoon of onion powder. We are going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. Mmm, these flavors are so good. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of an Italian seasoning blend. Now, if you don't have this, that's okay. If you have, um, maybe some oregano and some basil in your cupboard. You can mix those together, equal parts, and then measure out two teaspoons. One and two. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Just a quarter teaspoon. So what's really great about this dish is we get to control the amount of sodium that's going in there. Quarter teaspoon, and then a little bit of pepper. About a half a teaspoon of pepper is gonna go in here. And then finally, we, to be the binding agents, there are two that we're gonna use. We're gonna use some flour. Now, if you have white flour, you can use that. I actually have whole wheat flour today, so we're gonna add two tablespoons of whole wheat flour. And finally, one egg. Remember I said we had clean hands? Well, they are about to get dirty. Um, once we add the egg, we are going to mix this up. And our best tools in the kitchen are actually our hands. We're able to incorporate all of that yummy goodness, those seasonings together um, with the binding agent and the eggs. So you can see I'm diving right in. Again, I have clean hands. And we're gonna make about 20 meatballs with this um, wonderful mixture. See, you can see I'm just getting right in there using my hand. Now it might feel a little slimy, um, but that's okay. 
that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a little bit of texture um, with the meatball. So once all of those wonderful ingredients are incorporated, you can see it looks about like this. We're going to make about 20 meatballs using a tablespoon uh, measuring spoon here. So it can be overflowing, that's okay. We're gonna take it out, we're gonna roll it in our hands and make a meatball. So I think you might get the idea. I'm gonna put them into another dish. You can also put them on a sheet tray if you want to. Here we go, our hands can get sticky. So one thing, um, one way that you can avoid them getting sticky is actually dipping them in water. So if in fact you're, they're sticky and you're like, wait a second, I need um, some help here, a little too sticky for me, go ahead and, and wet your hands and then you'll be able to form your meatballs. We are here ready to make the sauce for our spaghetti and meatballs. So this is a super simple sauce and I'm gonna walk you through it. I already have a pan heating. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to that pan and that's olive oil I'm using. I'm gonna add some onion and we're gonna cook those for a couple minutes until they're translucent. So that means that they are opaque right now, but they're gonna turn clear. Okay. So we're gonna get this place smelling really, really good. So while this is in here, let's talk about what's gonna go also into this uh, mixture. So here we have tomato sauce. You'll notice I have no salt added tomato sauce, as well as crushed tomatoes with no salt added. The reason why is because we want to be able to control the salt in this dish. Oftentimes, pasta sauce is extremely high in sodium. And so by making our own sauce and by making sure that we're adding no salt added products, we're able to control the amount of sodium that we are putting into, um, our, into our food, which is great. Now, salt has its place, right? It provides a lot of flavor, but we're gonna add that ourselves versus letting somebody else add that for us. Now, I have a very large can. This is a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. We only need 14 ounces, so I am gonna only use half of this today. Okay, it's starting to smell really good in here. I'm just, I'm just um, making sure that these onions are not burning, moving them around. Next up, I'm going to add some garlic that I've already pre-chopped. I'm gonna add this, this is two cloves of garlic. I love to add my spices now, not after I've added the tomato product. And the reason why is because we're able to add heat to those spices, which enhance them. So, remember we talked about that Italian seasoning earlier when we were making our meatballs? We're going to use two more teaspoons of this Italian seasoning, and we're gonna get this room smelling amazing. Here we go, two teaspoons. You know, garlic and onions in and themselves are a really great base for a lot of different um, sauces that we're making. They just meld together and have such wonderful flavor. Mm. That Italian blend, again, is if you do not have an Italian blend, you can use basil and also oregano, which will give you a very similar flavor. This has a couple of other things like thyme and marjoram added to it, but um, sometimes just the basic um, oregano and um, basil will do just as well. You can even, if you have fresh, you can even use those instead of dried. But today we have dried because they're super simple and I keep them in the cupboard. And I make this sauce often, so it's a go-to for me because it is pretty quick and simple. Next, we are going to add the tomato products to the pan and we're gonna bring it to a boil. So first off, whoa, listen to that sizzle. That is the tomato sauce. That is eight ounces of tomato sauce. And crushed tomatoes, we're gonna add half of this can. This is a very hot burner, so know your burner. I'm gonna turn it down a little. Um, one thing, this is something that a lot of people don't know, but you want to wash the tops of your cans before you open them. And the reason why is because often cans are stored in warehouses and you just don't know what's in the warehouse. It could be dusty. Sometimes there might be a rodent running across the top of your can. So just what I always like to share is before you open your cans, just be sure that you rinse them. It can also be very careful because the edge of that can can be extremely sharp. 
I'm actually a victim of that injury and a couple years ago sliced my thumb extremely deep when I was actually doing a recipe for cooking matter. So um, I always like to give that warning to just be careful. So we are going to bring this to a boil. Then we're going to add our meatballs and cook our meatballs in the sauce. A lot of people have concern and have said to me, well, Courtney, I'm not necessarily comfortable cooking my meatballs in the sauce. That is a-okay. If your comfort level is to cook them in another pan and then add them to the sauce, by all means, feel free to do that. If you like that extra crispy crust on your meatball, you can do that too by cooking them either in the oven or in your sauce pan. I generally would say about 15 minutes on a 400 degree oven if in fact you're cooking them in the oven. Um, and on a saucepan, you just wanna make sure that they're cooked through to 165 degrees. So you can use your meat thermometer and go ahead and put it in there. So once I get this to a boil, I'm actually gonna cook the meatballs in the sauce today because that is how the recipe suggests. And that is how I've always done it. And I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy this dish that way. So here we go. This is coming up to a boil now coming up quite fast. Remember those meatballs I made? Here they are, and I'm just gonna simply plop them in, and then I'm gonna move them around and cover them with that wonderful yummy sauce. So you can see here, we have been cooking this sauce with the meatballs in it for about 10 minutes. Um, and I checked it with the thermometer, and the thermometer, the meatballs with the thermometer, and it read 165. So I know this is ready, and I'm gonna pull this off the stove. I'm gonna give it one last stir gently. You wanna be very gently, because those meatballs are extremely tender. I'm gonna move this over here. Then we're gonna plate the spaghetti and meatballs. Um, again, I selected two different types of um, noodles for us to use. One is that whole wheat noodle, and um, so I'm gonna just put a little bit of that no those noodles, and actually if you make them fancy and you, you twist them, isn't that really cool? And the serving size is roughly four meatballs, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I top this wonderful dish um, of pasta with these luscious looking meatballs. Look at that. That extra height on there makes it look super cool and like on top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. I'm gonna add just a little more sauce because I like my pasta saucy. So here's one great plate of the spaghetti and meatballs. Next, if you remember, I actually cooked up some of these zucchini noodles. And um, very simply, I just put them in some hot water to soften them. Not very long. You could either boil them or follow the package directions. But I also find that the sauce from the pasta, uh, from the meatballs, really will also help to cook them. And I don't want them overly cooked. What's great about using zucchini noodles is that I'm not filling up on carbs. I'm getting an extra vegetable in here, which is really great for me. So here we go. Here are my zucchini noodles. And again, I can add those meatballs right on top, getting some height. Oh yeah, look how high those meatballs are. It's really good to fill our bellies with good for us foods, which include whole grains. So that would be our whole grain pasta or our um, zucchini noodles as the base of this dish. So here you go. This is turkey meatballs and spaghetti. Oh, so yummy deliciousness we have here. So I hope that you enjoy this recipe.